Hello, my name is Peter Raymer. Today I'm going to show you how you can create your very own Microsoft Dynamics 365 for finance and operations development environment. You can use this development environment for front end functional testing of the system or you can open Visual Studio and create your own forms, tables, classes, um, write X++ code as I've shown you in many other videos. So let's get started. The first thing you need is uh, to sign in to lcs.dynamics.com. You can either register for an account or sign in using an existing account. This account does need to be associated to a Microsoft Dynamics 365 for Finance and Operations um, customer or partner. Otherwise, you won't be able to sign into lcs.dynamics.com. LCS stands for Lifecycle Services. You can be invited to an existing project because the, the first thing we need to do is create a new project. Um, and so uh, an existing project can go to these three lines, go to project users and actually add your email account to an existing project. Or you can go ahead and create a new blank one um, for the purposes of downloading a virtual machine. So I'm going to show you how you can do that. Um, first, go to all projects and then click this plus button. You'll get a dialog pop up that looks like this. I selected migrate, create solutions and learn. And then finally, you can fill in some of the details uh, in the dialog that pops up the name. The product name should be sent, set to finance and operations, the product version and methodology. And then finally, click create. You'll then get a blank empty project that looks like this. And this is really the dashboard. Before we proceed any further, I want to give kind of a brief breakdown of the different types of Dynamics 365 environments you can see within Lifecycle Services. First, there is some Microsoft tenancy machines that are um, tier two or later machines. You will tend to see those if we scroll over under environments here and they will have these green backgrounds to them. These are your tier two production or acceptance test environments. Um, these environments are not actually development environments. They are environments um, that are running on the Microsoft tenancy and you can access the front end forms of the system, but you can't actually remote into the machine itself. You can't run Visual Studio and change code. The way that you get code into these environments is by deploying AX deployable packages um, in LCS and then um, that code gets deployed to these environments. So when you see those, know that these are not development environments. Um, these are part of the Microsoft tenancy and part of a paid subscription. The second type of environment is actually a Azure cloud hosted environment. If you click on the three lines up top in LCS and select cloud hosted environments, this will take us to the cloud hosted environments page. And if there have been any provisioned um, environments already, you'll see them listed here. You can click on the full details button after you've selected it and get details on how to remote desktop into these Azure hosted um, cloud hosted environments. These are on your Azure subscription. They're also paid for kind of monthly um, based on your usage. But these are really useful because they're dedicated machines for this purpose so they're going to perform well like the Microsoft tenancy environments this is what's most commonly used when working with other clients the third option that I want to show you is a uh, environment that we can actually download and run on any um, you know Windows machine as a Hyper-V virtual image. To get there, we can either go to the three bars and the asset library if you see it there, or if you scroll all the way to the right on one of these blank projects and you select the asset library blue button um, on the side there, you'll get a page that looks like this. We need to click on the downloadable VHD tab here. 
On this page, it's usually blank the first time you come into it. Um, you need to click the import button, not the plus button, but the import button. And then it will show you some files that are part of the shared asset library for this tab that we've selected. In this case, we're seeing several 10.0.24 version machines. Um, as Microsoft comes out with later machines, they'll uh, usually update this list with um, newer and newer versions. So we can select this part of a file, click pick, and it will add it to this grid. Then click import again and do that over and over again until all nine um, of these parts of files have been added to this grid. The next step is go ahead and click on the blue text here. Um, this will start a download of this file. Now, this file is actually three gigabytes in size. Um, and each one of these are about three gigabytes in size. So this is gonna take a while to download. So I recommend you download one of these uh, one at a time. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and click cancel on that since I've already done that. Once we actually have all these different parts here, you can copy them into a single location. I've copied into my C drive VHD. Um, and then uh, you can double click on this executable and this executable will actually start a program where you can accept the terms and it will essentially uh, extract all of these zipped up files and combine them together into a single VHD. So you can specify the destination folder. In my case, I just specified the same folder and then click extract and let this run. I've already done that. You can see it produces, in my case, a 93 gigabyte VHD file. Okay, now that we've got our VHD file, there's a couple more things we need to do. If this is the first time you're using a Hyper-V image, we need to enable Hyper-V within Windows. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and type uh, Windows Features, and then I'm going to get, actually I'm gonna type Programs, and I should see this option, Turn Windows Features On or Off. When I click on that, it's going to pop up a dialog and it's going to spend a few minutes looking at all of the different features I've already got installed and then show me my various options. There's one option here that's marked Hyper-V. This will, um, if you've not done this already, it will be unchecked. You want to just check this box, make sure it shows the checkbox and not just a black box. It will also um, check any of these subfolders, which is what we want. Go ahead and click OK, and Windows will install this Hyper-V um, feature and tool set underneath. Uh, Windows will also let you know that you need to restart your computer after installing um, this feature. So go ahead and do that first before you go on to the next step. After you've done this and rebooted your machine, you can go back to Windows Start and type Hyper-V and select Hyper-V Manager. We now need Hyper-V to essentially run our VHD file. So we'll come in here, click the new option under actions, and then select virtual machine. It will bring up this new virtual machine wizard. Go ahead and click next on this first screen. Go ahead and give the name of your virtual machine. I'm just adding a two since I already have one. Um, and then click next. On this next option, it says specify generation. I went ahead and just left it as generation one and then click next. Now it's gonna ask you how much memory you want to allocate to this virtual machine and allow it to use. I would recommend you at least pick eight gigabytes of memory, otherwise your environment may run extremely slow. Um, yeah, hopefully you've got a lot of memory on your machine. I've picked 12 gigabytes here because I have 32 gigabytes on um, this machine and it will share memory with the rest of your operating system. Go ahead and click next. Then you need to specify how this virtual machine is gonna access the internet. Go ahead and pick default switch and it'll use your same internet connection as your main operating system. Go ahead and click next. Now here's where we need to make a change a little bit. Instead of picking create a virtual hard disk, we need to select the use an existing virtual hard disk and click browse. 
on here we need to actually pick the VHD file that we've already done so I'm gonna pick VHD select this uh, VHD file and select open then click next and it's gonna have a summary screen showing you uh, your virtual hard disk um, and your different options go ahead and click finish and it will configure your virtual machine I'm gonna go ahead and click cancel since I've already done this once you have your virtual machine go ahead and right click on it and select connect the system will pop up a window you can click the start button and it will begin starting up this virtual machine this may take a little bit of time the first time it does it but it'll get your machine started up uh, running um, this environment it will prompt us with what resolution we want this window to be in I'm gonna just keep with the defaults and select connect we'll be prompted to log in as the administrator and the password is pass at word one so p a s s at w o r d the number one and hit enter after you're signed in the very first time you need to run this admin user provisioning tool go ahead and right click on it run as administrator it's going to prompt you for an Azure Active Directory email address that it can use to replace the current admin user and making that email address an associated password the admin user which you can use to log into um, the D365 uh, front end environment enter in the email address and click submit that may take a few minutes as it does some replacement so just give it some time the next thing you want to do is to get the actual front end URL. You can go to Windows Start, type in IIS, and select the Internet Information Services Manager. Expand this node on the left side, expand sites, and then select AOS Service. This is the website that runs uh, D365. Under Browse Website, go ahead and click Browse, and then log in using the email address that you had typed into the admin user provisioning tool. Also, you want to go to services and then go ahead and start up the Microsoft Dynamics um, batch job that's running on this system. Um, if you don't do that, then your batch jobs won't be running. And then lastly, you can actually start Visual Studio. Um, depending on which version of D365 you're running, a different version of Visual Studio will be installed. You can then sign in uh, to activate Visual Studio and then go to View Application Explorer to see all of the nodes that make up um, D365. You can then follow my other videos on how to create a new model for adding new code. You can also follow another video on how to create a project and start developing your own components okay so in this uh, lesson and video we've created and downloaded a new Microsoft Dynamics 365 for finance and operations um, virtual machine we've started it in Hyper-V and now you've got your own very own sandbox that you can play with and do your own development in okay thank you so much for watching I really appreciate you watching if you like the video, click the like button. I also invite you to push the subscribe button as well. If there's other topics you would like to see a video on, please post in the comments and I'll see what I can do. I hope you learned something new today. Thank you.